Good evening. Ordinarily, if anything is ordinary just now, we would be heralding the good news that a third vaccine, the Moderna, has been approved for use in the UK, but it won't be available until spring. And although vaccination is already underway across the UK, today reported COVID deaths of 1,325, 1, 1, a record, along with an infection figure of 68,033, seem almost overwhelming. Yet, the figures are likely to get worse because hospitalizations are still rising. Sadiq Khan, the London mayor, declared a major incident today, saying the spread of COVID is out of control in the capital. And Public Health England said the number of deaths will rise until we stop the spread. So, do we need to lock down further and come down harder on people who are breaking the law? We'll be discussing that in a minute. But first, here's our policy editor, Lewis Goodall. Yes, Cathy, make no mistake, with every day that is going by, this is a situation which is getting... Yes, thank you both very much indeed. Pleasure. Now, Donald Trump will be the first American president in more than 150 years not to attend the full inauguration of his successor. He told us that much on Twitter today in a gesture that was hardly designed to heal, although tonight Joe Biden said it was a good thing he wasn't going to the inauguration. Trump had spoken last night from the White House finally condemning the rioters and insisting he was committed to a peaceful transition. But his voice was uncharacteristically monotone, which the Washington Post quip was like a hostage video. But next today, he was back in familiar territory, tweeting to his base, assuring them that them and they and he will have a giant voice long into the future. Now tonight, the Democrats have moved against Donald Trump. There are reports from Washington. They have circulated a draft article of impeachment. Our U.S. correspondent, uh, Mary Trump, um, expect the unexpected we just heard there. Let's begin first with the possible uh, efforts to impeach Donald Trump. Do you think that will make him more dangerous? I, I think that he won't go to the inauguration. Is this a sign, do you think, a possible sign that he thinks it's all over? Or even if there's no, if impeachment doesn't go forward, if they don't get the support uh, of Republican senators, is, do you think, something coming that could spell danger? I, Frank Luntz, good evening to you. Um, trying to push forward this idea of impeachment, if that is the case, would that be the best way to end the Trump era, given that impe once impeached, you can never stand again? Or is it a pipe dream for Democrats? I think it's the response. My apology, Frank Luntz, you know, is not going to be forthcoming. And I wonder how the Republican Party move on now. They move away from him, but he's certainly not moving on. How, do, how, do the Republican Party, how does the Republican Party move on and not have the vestiges of Trumpism? Or maybe the vestiges of Trumpism are a good thing? It's going to take... Frank Luntz. It will be a poignant weekend for fans of David Bowie. Sunday marks the fifth anniversary of his death and today would have been his 74th birthday. Among the events and programmes in his memory, including a two-hour BBC radio documentary on Sunday evening across two channels, a recorded performance of one of his last projects, the stage musical Lazarus, was live-streamed tonight, with two further performances planned over the weekend. Inspired by the book The Man Who Fell to Earth, Michael C. Hall plays the same character Bowie brought to life in the 1976 film adaptation. From all of us here, have a safe weekend. Good night.